virus that spread like wildfire. Global lockdowns, untold economic and personal devastation. This is the familiar story of COVID-19, but it isn't the only story. The truth, hidden and denied by the authorities in Beijing, is that the ambition of the Chinese Communist Party set the stage for a new pandemic months and years before the public encountered COVID-19. Over the past year, researchers inside the United States Senate conducted an in-depth investigation of the biosafety situation inside China from 2018 to 2021. What they found is disturbing. We started to find writings, we started to find statements, we started to find evidence of internal conversations that were being posted in different journals and the like. And we really began to see an uptick in the summer of the year 2019. So, you know, seven, eight months before COVID reached our shores, we already start to see evidence that something was happening. At the Wuhan Institute of Virology, a scientific laboratory controlled by the Chinese state, scientists have been experimenting on coronaviruses for almost two decades. Such research is always dangerous, but these experiments were especially so. So one of the things we know they were doing for sure, and they were doing in Wuhan, was gain of function. You've heard a lot about that. But what that basically means is that you take a naturally occurring virus that you would find in nature, and you reverse and en you engineer it, you mess with it, and you make it contagious in humans. So there might be a virus in an animal, and it may not be infectious in humans, but you change it in a laboratory, you make it infectious in humans. And the reason why you do that is because you try to predict how a virus that today is only found in animals could evolve into one that would be dangerous in humans. You try to predict it, you try to invent it yourself, and once you've invented it, then you try to find the cure for it. The problem is, once you invent it, someone might get infected with it. As far back as January 2018, Xi Jinping alerted his colleagues to the possibility of a new SARS-like virus infecting the population. Shortly thereafter, the U.S. State Department sent a cable warning of a shortage of appropriately trained technicians and investigators at the High Containment Laboratory in Wuhan. But that didn't stop China from continuing to perform dangerous experiments. In March 2018, the now infamous EcoHealth Alliance and the Wuhan lab applied for a U.S. grant to make naturally occurring bat coronaviruses transmissible to humans. The early warning signs also did not stop Xi Jinping from pushing his scientists to simplify the examination and approval of projects and lower the threshold for admission to achieve scientific breakthroughs at an early date. These researchers were doing some pretty scary and risky things. In essence, they were doing things that virtually no other labs in the world would dare do because of how dangerous, how risky, how unsafe they are. But in China, they were doing it. They want to become the world's dominant power in every field. One of those is biomedicine. And to do that, they have to cut corners and they have to make decisions about what they're going to prioritize, progress or safety. So, so what the impact of this political pressure is on Chinese researchers is they're told flat out that they were going to prioritize making progress. But by the fall of 2018, bad news was mounting. In one report, the director of the Wuhan lab discussed unspecified shortcomings and inadequacies in his team's work. A senior party member warned that certain problems exist. The signs are shocking, but not as shocking as what comes next. By January 2019, we have new evidence that the Wuhan lab was conducting new experiments on Chinese bats that carry important viruses. You start to hear researchers talking openly about a bat coronavirus that's developed into something that's very infectious and very dangerous to humans. You begin to see references about that, about the existence of that kind of virus in their laboratories and that that's one of the things they were working on. And that was sort of the beginning of, of this trail that, that really led us to a, to a, to a place that, that, I, that I think we find ourselves in today. In January 2019, Xi urged the party to be highly vigilant about black swan events. It was an ominous warning. And in February, scientists working with the People's Liberation Army, which frequently collaborated with researchers at the Wuhan lab, expressed concern that pathogens could infect experimental staffers and spread outside the laboratory. The safety situation at the lab only continued to decline. In May, staff wrote that regulation enforcement still needs to be strengthened because the lab's operations put biosafety at risk. Then, in the second half of 2019, something happened. 
So by the summer of 2019, at this point, the documents show us that clearly something was happening. The alarm was being rung about biosecurity issues, real concern about biosafety. You start to see an increasing amount of agitation and concern on the part of various researchers and people in charge of them, like the head of their Chinese version of the CDC, that became increasingly concerned about some biosafety event that had happened or was about to happen. And uh, we'll never know exactly for sure what it was that was happening in the summer of 2019, but it's another piece of that circumstantial evidence that starts to fill out the puzzle. In July, Xi Jinping tasked his rubber stamp legislature with drafting a biosecurity law. Shortly afterward, the Wuhan lab requested a major maintenance and renovation project, the fourth in one year in a facility less than two years old. Clearly, something wasn't right. By August, two senior scientists in China cautioned against potential pandemic pathogens that could unintentionally leak from a laboratory accident, while the leading biosafety expert at China's CDC wrote that more biosafety laws are urgently needed. That same month, local governments around China held infectious disease drills to simulate the explosive mass outbreak of a disease of unknown origin. The most ominous rehearsal came on September 18th. That drill, conducted in conjunction with the Wuhan lab, was in explicit preparation for the outbreak of a novel coronavirus. It was ordered just days after the lab increased physical security and shut down its online virus database in the middle of the night. At about the same time as the CCP placed the Chinese Academy of Sciences, the Wuhan lab's parent organization, under a political investigation that would last two months. As early as October, a senior Chinese official noted that the biosecurity situation in our country is grim and rumors began circulating among government insiders that a dangerous new virus was on the loose in Wuhan. On November 12th, party officials released an internal report on the situation inside Wuhan, implying that multiple biosafety incidents had already occurred. Once you have opened the stored test tubes, it is just as if you have opened Pandora's box. These viruses come without a shadow and leave without a trace. Five days later, Unpublished records show what may have been the first documented case, the real first documented case of COVID-19, followed by one to five new case reports each day. Now we know that the official timeline in China says the first cases of COVID-19 occurred in December, but by November of 2019, um, they're already closing schools. So something's already happening. Well, we don't know exactly if that at that point they've begun to see evidence of it spread or that they knew they had a lab leak and they were taking proactive measures, but they start closing schools in November of 2019 when they claim that the first known cases weren't until late December of 2019. As the disease spread, it was only a matter of time before the news of the outbreak came out. The moment came on December 30th, when rebellious Chinese doctors blew the whistle on their own government. Shortly after, the CCP finally admitted to the truth, but only part of the truth. Two years later, China still refuses to reveal what really happened. The Chinese Communist Party is very sensitive to their global image. The idea that their experimentation led to the creation of a virus that has basically turned the world upside down is something they'll never be able to admit. It could, it could threaten their hold on power internally, but it would most certainly change the world's perception towards them. So I believe there is no limits to what they are willing to do to make sure that the full story is never known. What is the true nature and origin of COVID-19? In the past three years, the world has suffered over 6 million deaths and over $11 trillion in economic losses related to COVID-19. We've been told that this catastrophe was an act of nature, but Chinese documents tell another story. They tell a story of reckless, power-hungry leaders who encouraged risky research in an environment that was clearly unsafe. And they tell a story of a government cover-up orchestrated to hide the possibility that COVID-19 was not naturally occurring at all, but the product of gain-of-function research in the Wuhan lab. So I'm not sure we'll ever know the entire story, but I think now we have enough pieces put together to really change the entire narrative. Whereas some were now saying in the past that the fact that it might have been naturally occurring was 50% likely and the lab leak was another 50%. I think this additional circumstantial evidence that's been gathered, which is pretty compelling and which has never been seen before, weigh heavily. Those odds 
towards something bad happened in one of these laboratories. It infected someone, they took it out into the general population, and they changed the course of history. Um, hopefully people will take this work and build upon it, but, um, but, but I, I do believe that the, these are troubling revelations. The world deserves to know the real origin of the disease that has caused so much suffering. The Chinese Communist Party must be held accountable for its lies. And we must never stop trying to uncover the truth.